welcome to my next video in this series. It wasn't really a series to start with, but it's become one. I wanted to originally do one on installing Arch on VirtualBox, but that ended up being way too long, so I've broken it apart. I've already done one about VirtualBox. This video is actually going to be about partitioning your hard drive. We're going to specifically focus on installing Arch, but we're going to talk about partitioning in general. And there are both reasons to do it and reasons not to do it. It's one of those situational dependent things and we'll discuss all that. So here we go. Let's talk about drive partitioning. What we're going to cover in this video, first off, what does drive partitioning actually mean? We will also talk a little bit about partitioning versus formatting and how almost everyone is using a partition drive because they're using Windows. We are also going to discuss reasons you might want to partition your hard drive, reasons you may not want to partition your hard drive, and several reasons that are situational. That is, it's going to depend on your situation as to whether it's advantageous to partition or not partition. What is partitioning? Basically, partitioning is separating your large hard drive into several smaller logical and independent spaces that will act as hard drives on their own. They're actually still part of the original hard drive, but your computer will see them as individual drives. It might surprise people to know that if you're using a Windows computer, you probably already have a partitioned hard drive. If you take a quick look at the Disk Manager in Windows, you'll see that your hard drive is partitioned into uh, three separate sections on a base install. Maybe more, maybe less, depends on what your OEM puts on there. But we have a healthy EFI partition, we have the Windows Recovery partition, and we actually have our C partition. In Linux, partitions are named a little differently than in Windows. For example, if we're partitioning hard drive SDA, then the partitions would be SDA1, SDA2, SDA3, and SDA4, and so on. Windows, it would be on, say, disk zero. We would actually give them names like EFI or recovery or C colon or D colon, depending on how many partitions you actually have. At this point, I do want to make a distinction between partitioning and formatting. Partitioning merely divides your drive up into uh, different sections. You still need to format each section to make it usable by your computer. Formatting writes the allocation map and other information that the computer uses to tell where files are stored. A partition drive that's not formatted is really not usable. Why we might want to partition our internal storage on a, from a single drive into multiple sections of a single drive. One of the big reasons would be if you're trying to boot multiple OSs, each OS will have its own file system, require its own boot partition, and ha in general have its own requirements. So in, if you're going to multi-boot your computer, then you would need partitions for each operating system. You also might want to separate your data from your system files. This provides some level of protection for your data and that when the OS crashes for whatever reason, your data should still be safe. On some OSs, if you have your data in a separate partition and you reload the OS, you'll be right back where you started at because your configuration files are stored with your user data. So this can make the reinstallation of an OS much easier. 
You may also want to use different file systems than what came with your uh, operating system. There are lots to choose from out there. And another use for a separate partition would be an emergency recovery partition, which would work sort of like a emergency recovery USB key in that you'd have a small partition with an operating system and some uh, recovery utilities set up on your hard drive. You would set it up as bootable, but you would put it after your main bootable partition in the boot order. And then if your main partition fails, you can boot into your emergency recovery partition. You may also want to have an encrypted partition, whereas you don't want to encrypt your whole hard drive, but you want to encrypt some pieces of data. In this case, a partition can be encrypted without affecting the rest of the drive. Why you might not want to partition your drive. One of the uh, primary reasons can be drive partitioning can be very wasteful in space if you set up your partition sizes wrong. Space in one partition cannot be used by another partition. In some circumstances, it may be simpler and better just to install a separate hard drive. This depends on your individual situation because sometimes you may not be able to do that. A separate hard drive will provide some immunity from a total drive failure, whereas partitioning won't actually provide that. And installing a second hard drive could increase overall available space. And there's no real loss or wasted space when you do it this way. But again, it depends on your situation. You may not be able to install another hard drive, in which case you're back to partitioning. Reasons that are somewhat situational for partitioning a drive. I've heard people talk about backups being a reason to partition and not to partition. It may be easier to back up a partition, or it may be easier if you sort your files into folders and back them up that way. This is going to be very dependent on your specific situation as to whether partitioning can help with this or not. Encryption. Yes, it's probably easier to encrypt an entire partition, but it's still possible to encrypt individual folders and files as well. So this is also a situational issue, which will depend on your situation as to whether you want to have partitions for this reason or not. Speed of access. This is something that applies specifically to uh, mechanical hard drives and not to solid state drives. When I've partitioned mechanical hard drives in the past, I've not noticed a very large change in performance. So your mileage may vary on this. And if you're, like I say, if you're running a solid state drive, this is not an issue because solid state drives don't suffer from the same issues as mechanical drives and they are not subject to the same delays. Special cases. The biggest special case is going to be servers. If you're running a server, there are other reasons to partition. And again, we're assuming internet connection here. If you have no internet connection, you're not worried about being cyber attacked, then maybe not so much. But you can make recovery a whole lot easier from various cyber attacks if you have a partitioned hard drive and separate out some of your files from the root partition. Storing temporary data on a separate partition will also allow you to reboot your server if it's crashed after a DOS attack. In some cases, it's easier slash simpler to control access to specific partitions rather than trying to do it by files or folders. But again, these reasons really only apply to servers. All right, let's do an example. Since we're going to eventually be going to a Arch install on VirtualBox, I'm going to go through an example of what I would, what I'm going to do there. For Arch Linux installation, I'll be using four partitions. Since I'm doing an EFI, I will need a FAT32 EFI partition. Uh, we can argue about swap partitions or whether you need them or not, but I'm going to add one. Then there's the uh, root partition, which contains pretty much all the uh, files for the uh, Linux system. And the last partition would be a home partition. Uh, the Linux and the root partition, my home partition will be ext4. And the home partition contains user data, which is separate from the uh, system data. This is a nice setup because I can totally delete the uh, 
system partition and re recreate it and reinstall the system and all my user data and settings are still there and I can be right back where I started. And so we've come to the end of another video and it's time for the conclusion. Our discussion in this video was around uh, partitioning your drive into multiple uh, sections. The biggest reason for me is actually booting into multiple OS's. I do that. Uh, also separating my system data from my personal data because I have in the past had to replace the OS and this makes it much easier and especially with Linux I'm right back where I started once I load everything back up. Also you may want to use different file systems, create a recovery partition, or encrypt your partition. I don't really use these a lot for a recovery. I actually use a USB key. But again, it's uh, your system and your mileage may vary. So thank you for uh, watching this.